morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to the Church of One Love Facebook Live. Woo! <laughs> Please join us in singing This Life is Mine. always been and will always 
his being. That nothing can ruffle, nothing can shake. And further, we affirm this morning that we are a part of that. That is ours. It cannot be taken from us. Thank you, God, that at any moment we get to make a choice for that love. To remember who we are in love and in truth. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity and we are open to any guidance in how to remember that because we forget on a daily basis in our human bodies. And that's okay because love is who we are and love is why we're here. Join us now in singing I Release and I Let Go.
you to read a poem by Rumi, um, translated by Andrew Hardy. This is from his poem cycle, Poems from the Tavern. The grapes of my body can only become wine after the winemaker tramples me. I surrender my spirit like grapes to his trampling so my inmost heart can blaze and dance with joy. Although the grapes go on weeping blood and sobbing, I cannot bear any more anguish, any more cruelty. The trampler stuffs cotton in his ears. I am not working in ignorance. You can deny me if you want. You have every excuse, but it is I who am the master of this work. And when through my passion you reach perfection, you will never be done praising my name.
I share with you something that I went through, that I learned from. I share some of the things that I learned from it and how I'm moving forward. And that's me speaking from my mastery. There are other times that I speak right from my growing edge. <laughs> this morning, I speak as a grape being trampled by the divine master. So just know that. And in New Thought, we do not like the word powerless. We do not like that word. How can we change our thoughts, our minds, our lives if we're powerless? How can we possibly do that? Well, here's what I want to show you this morning. Because what I believe is, this is the way I think of myself. I am a power tool. I'm a power tool. There is no end to the power and capacity that I have to do, possibly, a specialized task. And this morning, I have brought with you, with me, to you, a visual aid. Hold on a second. This is my hair dryer. <laughs> it's very powerful. It's 875 watts. It says right here on the side. Now, if I want to dry my hair, and I go, it doesn't do anything, <laughs> right? I can wave it, I can stick it up under my hair, I can put it over my hair, I can rub it on my hair. I know, I make it a mess of my hair. I can just try to, try to fan it so fast that my hair will get dry, and my hair will dry eventually, because that's the law. That water doesn't stay in the same place, it evaporates. But I will not be able to use the power tool until I plug it into the power. So maybe that song, if I had written it, which I didn't, if I had written it, I might have said, you got to believe that you can plug in the power. Doing my darndest to dry the uh, soupy mess that I'm in. And so once I really got it, and here's what it took for me to really get it. Because I mean, I'm a minister, I'm supposed to be plugged in all the time, right? Isn't that my job? Well, kind of, it is my job. But I forget like everybody else because guess what? I'm a minister, but way before I was a minister, I was a human. And ever since I became a minister, I've been a human. And as far as I know, I will continue to be until my death or ascension. If I get perfect, I may just <laughs> suddenly disappear. You never know. But I doubt it. I doubt it. So I have to be reminded. I have to be reminded and I have to remind myself. And sometimes I am so convinced that I can do it. Or more often, I'm so convinced there's no way this can be done. So I gotta figure it out. I gotta figure it out. Let me make a list. Let me make a list. Let me hurry up. Let me stay up late. Let me get up early. Let me let me ask for help, even. That I don't do that a lot, but sometimes I do ask for help. But but I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out. And until I get so tired of not being able to figure it out and reach a wall that is really just a door, but I think it's a wall that I beat my head against it over and over again. It's not until that point sometimes that I go, oh yeah, it's not about me and what I can do. So I'm going to tell you a story. It's an ugly story. It's not a pretty story. And um, it's my story, but maybe it's your story too. Maybe some of the details are different. But maybe it's your story too. I am tired. I am confused. I've not seen my mother or my daughter or my friends or my church community live and face to face. I've not had a haircut since March. I'm sick of cooking. Sometimes I'm sick of my spouse. I asked him the other day, don't you get tired of me? And he said, no. And I was like, wow. 
I am so tired of me. I can't believe that you're not. And I love you, but I'm tired of you. Please go away. Go to another room. I'm sick of TV. I'm sick of being in my house. I'm sick of my furniture. I'm sick of cleaning. I'm sick of my yard. I'm sick of the town I'm in. I haven't been out of here. And I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm asking myself, will it be okay? Will it ever be okay? Will it ever end? Is COVID forever? What if I get dumb and make a mistake and get sick and die? Or someone I love gets sick and dies? Or worse, what if I contract it and give it to someone I love who then gets sick and dies? How will I possibly deal with that? Or what if I do everything right? What if I wear my mask everywhere I go? which I do. What if I carry hand sanitizer in my purse and in my car, which I do. What if I actually carry uh, Clorox wipes with me for everywhere that I go so that if there's any surface I have to touch, I can wipe it down, which I do. What if I do it all right and it happens anyway? What if the election blows up this country? What if the government fails? What if my finances fail? What if I lose my job, my income, my home, my security, my retirement, my investments? What if they all lose their value? I don't have any investments, by the way, so that's probably hard to do, but what if, what if, what if, what if my neighbor turns against me? What if my family divides? What if someone in my family dies before that that uh, rift is mended? What if there's a civil war? What if it's the end of the world? Is all this love, peace, spirit, we're all one stuff, just bunk? What if I'm wrong about that? What if I'm a fake? What if I'm not doing it right? What am I not, what if I'm not doing it right for the world, for you, for all of my loved ones, for my relationships, and for myself? What if I'm not doing it right? About two and a half weeks ago, all of those things that have been in the back of my mind, that I've been carefully breathing spirit into and sharing with people, there's nothing to be afraid of because God is in charge, knocked me on my rear end. I was so tired and I couldn't keep up with everything on my to-do list. And some of it was stuff that I really didn't want to do. Memorial services for people I love. I mean, I wanted to do it, but I did not want to do that. And I'm not talking about me, y'all. I'm not asking you to fix me. I'm not asking you to feel sorry for me. You can pray for me if you want to, but that's always, always pray for me, please, as I pray for you, always. But if none of this rings a bell for you, then, you know, go get some donuts and get ready for the Cowboy game tonight. But if any of this rings a bell for you, I'm telling you that it was the point at which I dropped to my knees in surrender. I didn't actually drop to my knees because I have fake knees and it hurts. They don't bend that well. But what I did is literally I threw my hands in the air and I said, Okay, God, I surrender. I do not know how to do any of this. I don't know how. I don't know how to even take care of myself. While I try to get this list of stuff done that I'm supposed to do. And I'm tearing up right now, but I was ugly crying then. Ugly crying. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. I admitted it. I can't do it. It's not working for me. I don't know how. I keep thinking I'm practicing it. I keep thinking I'm doing it right. I get up in the morning. I do my prayer and meditation. I talk about self-care all the time. What am I going to do for self-care? Well, I need to make sure I schedule in a day. And then what happens if I, I don't need to go there. It did, but my, my, my point is, I, I realize I don't know how. And I had been trying to run my life on my know-how, in a K-N-O-W, my know-how, when really, I had no how, N-O. I didn't know how. I didn't know how. 
And in that moment of surrender, everything got perfect and it all got done. And I was rested and relaxed and I may never cry again. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> in that moment, though, I got a very clear message from the divine. Okay, if you're ready to quit, if you're ready to plug into the divine, rather than staying in your tiny mind and working things over and over again, if you're ready to plug into the divine, the divine is here, it always has been. I never went away, but sometimes you go really far away. And when I realized that every single one of these fears, every single one of these fears is right here it's not happening in the world. It's not actually happening. It's all right here. So that wears me down. That's not good self-care. To feed myself with thoughts that do not nourish me, but instead diminish me. I'm going to say that for you. It is not self-care for you to feed yourself with thoughts that do not nourish you. Whatever that means. For me, it means I don't watch the news. I will read the news, and then I get to choose, and I'm not bombarded with the same negative stuff over and over and over and over again in each newscast. I get to read it once, go, hmm, whatever I think about that, give it to God, go on. That's one of my strategies that may not be yours. I don't enter into arguments with people to the best of my ability. I... Um, I've told my husband when he's like, what do you want to watch on TV? You want to watch a movie? I'm like, only if it has a happy ending. <laughs> I am not going to watch a movie that's going to make me tear my soul apart because I'm already tearing my soul apart without help. Thank you very much. So that's one thing. How can I nourish myself? Because I got a real clear message that I do not nourish myself when I hang out in any of those places in my mind. The only place in my mind I need to hang out is God, Divine Spirit, Presence, Love. Fill my mind and guide me forward into the next thing that I am to do. Give me strength and energy. Help me know. Help me know from my higher self. Help me know from this boundless, infinite wisdom of the universe. Help me know what to do. Because I start thinking, I know what to do. I start thinking, Melinda knows what to do. And Melinda does not. Now, I'm not going to say that for you. Maybe you do know what to do. This is what works for me. I get to stop and look at the truth and know that I don't know. And... Here's the thing, any one of these fears, or all of them, could happen. They could. And any one of an infinite number, a billion, kajillion, quadrillion, godzillion, other possibilities could happen too. And I don't know what they're going to be. I know that the only power I have is the power of love that I plug into. And when I plug into that power of love, then I do have an influence. In every moment that I choose love, instead of fear, instead of hatred, instead of anger, instead of ruminating on the past or dreading the future, every moment that I choose love, I am adding to the possibility that what does happen is something that's for the good of all. Meanwhile, no matter what happens, I don't know if it's for the good of all. I love that Rumi of Home where you know, the grapes are like, don't, you know, stop, 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 this hurts. But the master knows what the master is doing, and the master is making fine, fine wine. That's what's happening, I believe, on this planet right now. It's what's happening in me right now. It's what's happening in you right now, and I can either cooperate with the process or not. So, I believe. I really only have to know one thing. 
do I believe in love or do I not believe in love? If I do believe in love, then I am happy to be powerless of myself, just as Jesus said. Don't call me good. Of myself, I have no power. It is the Father within, which was his term for that indwelling spirit, which was his term for eternal, boundless, infinite love. His word for God. I can't do it, but God within me can. God within me can. And as soon as I had that thought, I began to breathe. And I realized that my throat had been closed, that my chest felt tight, that my stomach didn't feel good. And I breathed. I breathed through my throat and loved it open. I breathed through my heart and loved it open. I breathed through my stomach and loved it unclenched. And I realized that I have to do this every day, possibly many, many, many times a day. I can't do it and call it done. And it reminded me of a story about Gandhi when his um, helpers and assistants came to him in the morning, in the early morning when he was about to go into his room to meditate, and they said, there are so many things on your list today that you can't spend your whole hour in meditation. I mean, we, there are too many things to get done. You're scheduled too many places. And he said, ah, you are correct. I cannot spend my whole hour in meditation. I must spend two. Now, I've heard that story. And I've used it in teaching and in speaking. Have I done it, though? I made a commitment to myself. This is what I did. I made a commitment to double my time, my quiet time with God every day. Whatever that means to you. I, I have a morning ritual that I do, and I made a commitment to double it. And you know what? I feel better. Things that need to get done do get done. Things that don't need to get done might not. And some things get done imperfectly. Yeah, all of that, surrender. All it is is surrender. I'm not telling you what to do. Maybe you're meditating exactly enough right now. But I am saying, plug in. That's all spirit has been waiting for. If you're experiencing any of the above symptoms, or side effects thereof, then all spirit is waiting for is for you to plug in. Spirit is here. And I have this vision in one of my meditations that like, because for me, I keep thinking, you know, how can I help everybody else? I'm, I'm, I'm told I have to put on my oxygen mask first, but I tend to go to the waterfall and fill a cup and hand out cups and forget to drink myself. And I thought, oh, I need to take a drink. At least every two or three cups I give to someone else, I need to take a drink. And then I went, whoa, what if I just hook up a hose to the waterfall? And then I have this, I don't have to keep running back and forth with this cup. I can just reach up and take a drink and keep giving it to other people. And then I thought, whoa, what if I stand in the waterfall? What if I never, ever leave it? What if I stand in the waterfall as a beacon to everyone who is thirsty and say, it's right here, dudes, anytime. Have all the water you need anytime. And I love you so much that I'm not going to assume that you can't find it without me, without my little self, micromanaging it. I love you so much, and I trust you so much, and I believe in you so much, and I know you so well that I know that I know, and it doesn't matter whether I've ever met you or not, I know that you have that wisdom within you. And you have the same access to the waterfall as anyone. And I am inviting you in. Thank you. I'm going to read another poem from the text.
Um, and just let you know that um, in, in the Sufi tradition, which is what Rumi um, was very much of that tradition, uh, it, they talk a lot about a love affair with God. And they use that metaphor of the lover. And it's not, and it's a metaphor. It's not a sexual love. It's, it's a love of oneness. So this poem is called The Lovers. The lovers will drink wine night and day. They will drink until they can tear away the veils of intellect and melt away the layers of shame and modesty. When in love, body, mind, heart, and soul don't even exist, become this. Fall in love. Fall in love, and you will never be separated again. Let's take that into meditation. Mm -hmm. Turn your attention to the base of your spine, to your sits bones. If there is any tension there, simply breathe into it. Consciously breathing the love of God, the love of spirit, the one love into that. just below your belly button. Concentrate there for a moment. Is there any tension? Any tension there? I invite you to breathe deeply into your abdomen. Feel as if you're breathing from that place in your abdomen. And breathe deeply. Drink deeply from the waterfall of love. Drink. 
And now I ask you to focus on your heart space. Not just your physical heart, but that, that place in the center of your chest where we seem to feel a lot of our feelings. That place that hurts when we think about loss. That place that almost aches with love when we gaze upon our Breathe that perfect love of God into it and know that there's no need to protect. There's only the need to attend and remember. And now I'd like you to focus on your throat. Years ago, you know you're connected to the waterfall. And lastly, I invite you to bring your attention to the top of your head. The top of your physical head and the space above it. Feel that constant, never-ending waterfall of love. Not pouring on you, but flowing through you to bless every single thing inside you and then to go out and bless the world. Scared me. 
nothing can touch that is perfectly safe. It doesn't need defending. It is brave and courageous and wide open. And that place within me is the one love of spirit that I share with every, every being. And I trust that when I don't know, all I have to do is go to this place and say, hey, little me doesn't know. Can I get some information? I'm ready to hook up. I'm ready to quit spinning my wheels and actually plug into the power. And the instant we do that, the power is ours. It was never gone. We were never really disconnected. We just forgot. And so to end this meditation, this is my prayer. The spirit of love living in each and every one of us. Thank you for informing our humanness so that we can learn and grow. Help us remember. Help us remember that love is why we're here. So we give and we receive. And we are so grateful. Keep breathing, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to the room that you're in, to the screen that you're watching, if you feel like it. No rules. You can do what you want. This is traditionally the time in our service for um, the giving of our tithes and offerings. Maddie has all of that stuff there on the screen for you to know how to do this and um, through various magical technological things that I don't really understand. <laughs> or you can just put a stamp on it and put it in the mail, which I understand very well. Either way, it's all energy and we allow that energy to flow. And so let's affirm our our affirmation of prosperity here in the church. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I'm grateful. Amen.
Thank you, God, we allow these gifts to flow through us, knowing that they bless us as they come into the church, and they bless the world as they go out again, doing the work in the way of love. We extend that prayer to every giver, knowing that as they give, they open the flow through themselves. We open the flow through ourselves. And we are in that constant flow of giving and receiving for this amazing, amazing truth. We give our grateful thanks and we say amen. So a few announcements. I'll probably forget some, but Maddie's putting them up on the screen because we decided we won't rely on Linda. Now into its fourth week. And so we don't know when the sign is going to be up. We've decided to just let Spirit handle that. And we will let you know when it's time to come and see the sign. And that is when the party will be, and we're releasing it. We're setting down that burden and simply letting it go, as the song says. Know, however, every single day at 7 p.m., your prayer partners are praying with and for you and for this community and for the world. You may join them at any time, and if you have a particular prayer request, all you have to do is make it known to pretty much anybody at the church and we'll get it in the right hands. You can email info at churchofonelove.org. You can, in, you can uh, email revmel at churchofonelove.org and we'll make sure, or you can just text anybody that you know that's on the prayer team or that knows somebody that's on the prayer team. I promise, we got channels in place for you to get your prayer heard and prayed for. So please avail yourself Know also that we continue to have classes on Monday night um, for A Course in Miracles on Wednesday mornings at 1030. Um, we're still studying the Pain of Children book. Um, what's it called? When Things Fall Apart. Mm. And uh, we'll be finishing that up in the next month or so and starting a new book. And the next book we're going to do is The Untethered Soul. Um, also, there is the ongoing Course of Love class on Thursday evenings with Perry. If you would like to come to any of these classes, all you have to do is email somebody or text somebody and say, I need to get the link to that class because the classes are on Zoom. You can't just watch them. You have to actually sign in to the class itself. So uh, letting you know that our tithes um, this last month went to the food bank at MetroCrest and also to um, the Black Justice Coalition. And also, uh, we are in the middle of a fundraiser for Bees Kids. Bees Kids provides food and uh, school supplies for children who otherwise would not have food and school supplies. And so, um, rather than collecting the stuff here and then taking it to them, our COVID way of doing this is going directly to their website to donate. It's really easy, it's real quick, and when you do, in the notes below, just say, from Church of One Love, and they will know that it that it is from us. Um, we've been partners with them for a little while, and it continues to be um, an ongoing thing that we can that we can give, and that we're so glad to give, to give back to the community. Also, North Texas Giving Day is coming up, and I can't remember the date, but Maddie, knows the date, and she's going to put that on that screen for you right now. Also, the sign is almost paid for. There was a $2,000 challenge, um, that a matching challenge, that whatever was raised up to $2,000 would be matched by a donor, and we've raised a little less than half of that now. So anything that you give right now, your money is doubled, just telling you, up to $2,000. And um, we'll get the sign paid for without affecting our budget at all and going on with our wonderful and free life as Church of One Love. I have talked plenty enough. Yes, I have. Let's close with our closing song, Love is My Decision.